Hi, I'm Pia. I'm an economic researcher and I teach microeconomics. In this video, we're going to learn about the consumer price index and measuring the cost of living. The first step will be to understand why we use data when discussing macroeconomics. Then we are going to learn how to measure the cost of living, which will lead us to see how the consumer price index is constructed and finally the inflation rate. This will allow us to assess how prices affect the economy and also its population. So let's begin. Economic growth consists on an overall increase in gross domestic product over a certain period of time. Although GDP variation reflects how an economy grows, this can be caused by different factors. The important issue, however, is how can this growth be explained or what makes an economy grow? We said that every transaction in an economy consists on a certain quantity given a certain price. So that means an economy can grow by two reasons. One reason may be that it's producing more and making more transactions. This would mean a rise in quantity or output. More products are being sold, more people are consuming, more transactions are being made. Another reason is prices. We can observe a higher GDP in a country However, it may only be generated from a rise in prices, in other words, inflation. And finally, it can be caused by both factors. We can experience more output, but it could be overestimated by inflation. This is where the concept of real GDP becomes important, because it measures total income by isolating inflation effects. Real GDP stands for GDP expressed in constant prices. As a result, we obtain a more accurate indicator of economic growth. So prices have a big impact on every economy. Prices are essential in order to assess whether an economy has genuinely grown. But prices have other impacts. Let's discuss the impacts of inflation. Inflation consists on a sustained increase in the average level of prices in the economy. This means that all the goods and services, at least the ones we all consume, are getting more expensive. We all pay the same for set products. A carton of milk costs the same for either a rich person and a poor person. As a consequence, if prices are rising, poorer sectors will have a harder time purchasing the same amount of products since they use a larger proportion of their income. This consists then in an unequal impact among richer or poorer sectors within the population. Let's go over this concept in depth. In order for real GDP to be as accurate as possible, we need to capture the actual effect of inflation in the economy. In other words, accurate real GDP measurement implies the use of an efficient index that captures the impact of inflation in the population. In order to do this, we need to measure the cost of living. So what's the cost of living? It's the amount of money a household needs to spend to cover basic expenses such as housing, food, clothing and transportation. In order to measure it, we need to make comparisons in terms of purchasing power. And by purchasing power, we mean the amount of money that a personal group has available to spend. Putting it in practical terms, with inflation, households will have less money available to spend. This means that it will be more difficult for them to achieve the same cost of living. This takes us to what is called the Consumer Price Index. The Consumer Price Index, or the CPI, allows us to monitor changes in the cost of living over time. But which prices does the CPI measure exactly? In order for this indicator to be accurate, we have to establish which prices it is going to measure. For example, if we took into account the price of yachts, Ferraris, or jewelry, we might be giving importance to goods that are inaccessible to many parts of the population. Let's dig deeper into this concept. The Consumer Price Index is a measure of the relative change over time of prices experienced by urban households in an economy using a representative basket of goods and services. As we previously said, its aim is to capture a representative portion of the prices evolution. How do we do that? By establishing the basket of goods and services. This is a sample of goods and services that are considered representative of average household spending. In the US, the price of several over retail and service outlets is collected from many regions. This allows us to obtain a relative change in prices. This is actually important since we are not talking about the actual price level, 
we are measuring the change in prices. So how do we calculate the CPI? Let's do a small example. Let's assume that the basket of goods in an economy consists on three goods, two pounds of cheese, two haircuts, and 10 gallons of gasoline per year. Our aim is to calculate the CPI for years 2005 and 2006 with 2005 as the base year. To do this, we need to estimate the total cost of this basket of goods for both years and then establish the comparison. So, for year 2005, we multiply each item by its price, the cheese by the price, the haircuts by the $3, and the 10 gallons of gasoline by the $1.5. The total cost of this basket is $25. Now try to do the same exercise for year 2006. You will see that since prices have changed, our total cost will be now $27. Now we continue with the CPI calculation. Look at the formula. CPI consists on dividing the basket of the year we want to measure by the basket of the base year and then multiplying it by 100. This small table aids us with the previous results. Remember that basket total cost for 2005, the base year, was $25 and $27 for 2006. Let's calculate now the CPI for 2005. You can see that since it's the base year, our index will be exactly 100. But if we do it for 2006, we can measure the change in prices. The basket total cost of 2006 is 27, which divided by the basket cost of the base year will be 1.08. Then, multiplied by 100, we arrive at 108. Now we have the CPI for years 2005 and 2006. What can we do with these numbers? We can measure the inflation rate, the inflation rate formula consists on calculating the difference between the CPI in the year we are standing on versus the CPI of the base year. All of that divided by the base year. So, if we want to measure the inflation in 2006, we should calculate the difference between 108 and 100 and then divide it by 100. This shows us that the inflation rate in 2006 is 8%. In other words, households have to earn 8% higher in order to access the same basket of goods than the previous year. The cost of living in 2006 is higher. Which are the most common mistakes? Remember that when measuring the CPI, the index seeks to capture the change in price. Its aim is to analyze whether there's a change in prices taking that the reference is the same basket of goods. Although this basket may change when prices rise or there could be updates, the idea is to find out whether purchasing power has decreased. Also, remember the expressions and their units of measure. CPI is an index number, so it is expressed in whole numbers because it represents the evolution towards the base year. Inflation, on the other hand, is expressed at a percentage rate because it's a variation between two index numbers. To sum up, CPI is an indicator that helps us calculate the evolution in the cost of living. CPI also shows us the inflation rate, which equals the sustained increase in average level of prices in the economy. In other words, a general decrease in purchasing power for households. With this, you may understand the utilities of the cost of living and the CPI. This also should help you with a better approach towards the definition of inflation and its impacts. Hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to learn more, please feel free to explore on check.